The number of migrant crossings to the UK reached a record high on Monday with a total of 696 making the journey across the channel. The number of crossings this year has now surpassed 17,000 people, a stark increase from the 9,500 that occurred at the same time last year. And these staggering figures follows reports that the Home Secretary Priti Patel is close to agreeing a return to the borders deal with France. That move comes despite previous deals with the French border force failing to make any kind of serious impact in preventing crossings. There also remains uncertainty, of course, over the government's Rwanda plan, which has been mired in legal disputes after left-wing activists predictably took umbrage to the deal. And naturally, the liberal elites don't seem to care about the migrant crisis spiraling out of control, but we certainly do here at GB News. So tonight I'm asking you this. After small boat arrivals hit record levels this week, is the UK too welcoming of illegal migrants. Let me know your thoughts by emailing dan at gbnews.uk. Tweet me at gbnews. While you're there, uh, go and vote in our poll. Of course, those results coming up shortly, but to help you make up your mind, I'm joined by the former Conservative Minister and Brexit Party MEP, Anne Whittacombe, and the writer and broadcaster, Nina Mishkov. So, Anne Whittacombe, are we just being far too welcoming to illegal migrants? Well, it isn't a question of whether we're welcoming or not. Our problem is that we're just not taking any realistic action um, to deter them from coming in the numbers that they're coming in. The idea of saying that we're going to cooperate with France, we have been cooperating with France for years. They haven't been cooperating with us. We've paid them huge sums of money. They haven't delivered. No salvation at all is in cooperating with France. Now, what I think we've got to do is two things. One, I think we've got to get the Rwanda plan reactivated by coming out of the ECHR, but you can't do that by Tuesday afternoon. Uh, the second thing is I think that we need to implement the policy that I advocated 20 years ago, which is that you automatically detain and secure accommodation, all new asylum seekers, so we know where they are while we consider their cases individually. And then because we know where they are, we can return those that do not qualify for asylum. But at the moment, we don't do that. We have a flourishing underground economy in this country. We have no national identity cards. One of the big attractions of Britain is that it's one of the easiest places in which to disappear. They're in a safe country. They're in France, which is a signatory to every convention that we have signed up to. They're in a country under the rule of law. They're in a democratic country. That is where they should be applying for asylum. Nina Mishkov, we're just too welcoming, aren't we? No, we're not. I mean, we signed up to the Geneva Convention on Re Refugees in 1951, and we have not, as I know, as far as I know, uh, abdicated from that. Um, and we were talking about illegal um, migrants. We don't know they're illegal until they've been processed. And more than 50% of the migrants that land on our shores turn out to be not illegal. Um, I'd like to take up Anne's first point, which is Rwanda. Rwanda is just a pie-in-the-sky scheme that is absolutely not going mm -hmm. to work. For a start, the, I doubt very much if there's ever going to be any flights this year because of the legal considerations. Now, we're not even talking about humanity or whether this is right or wrong. Um, but it, but it just, only, just very recently, Rwanda came out and said, well, they've only got room for 200 at the moment. Well, 200 doesn't do it, and we've paid them 120 million. This is just rearranging the deck chairs. The trouble is we have a foreign... We have Priti Patel, who's been absolutely disastrous. We have a foreign office, which is not fit for purpose. What we need is a system where, in, set up in, in France, which the French have offered to us and which we turned down a couple of years ago, was to, to set up a system where people can apply in France and be processed there and, and, and d disposed of before they come over here. When they, people come here, they yeah. need to be processed in, quickly. Why does it take France, years? They're if, incarcerated they're in, and they're not allowed you to work. You know, we have a, yes, and, and you come in. Thank you. If they're in France, then they should be applying initially to France. That is what they should no, be that, that's, doing. And, and they, they are, they are well, allowed under the Geneva Nina, Convention you had, you had, to go... Nina, then you just let, uh, let Anne answer, Nina, and then, and then I'll come back to you. I'm sorry, Nina, but this is a two-way discussion, not a one-way one. Uh, if they're in France, they should be uh, applying to France. Secondly, uh, it's all very well uh, offering facilities in France itself. But if they don't qualify, do you really think 
they're just going to go away. They will come here anyway on the boats because we are an attractive place to be because you can disappear so easily. They're economic migrants, an awful lot of them. Some are genuine refugees. And I mean, the one thing that I do have in, in common with Nina is that if they are genuine refugees, they should be given a proper welcome. We could establish that much more quickly if we knew exactly where they were and had them in, in, in one place. And that is what I have advocated for years. Because, Nina, the reality is, as Anne says, the vast majority are economic migrants. No, Look then, at their not, age. That's not true. Look that's at where they're true. coming from. It is true, It's not, Nina. not the majority. The majority are not illegal. Where's your evidence for that? I mean, the, fact, the facts are there. that They are, they are not illegal. And they, but they, the, the problem is they need to be processed properly. You know, we, we have got one, you know, 1. 1.2 million jobs going begging. You know, if we could process these people... You know, fruits rotting in the fields, vegetables are rotting. You know, if these are people that, that, that can be processed quickly and if they're legal, put to work, get them on the, t get them paying taxes, get them a part of the system. You know, countries were, were established, cities were established on migrants. It's, you know, we need. But then that makes us an even more attractive destination for the people smugglers. I mean, Nina, you're not talking about the fact that, that the, the, this illegal migrant trade, which you seem to want to encourage, is all about empowering people smuggling. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to encourage it. I'm saying they should be processed quickly. The problem is we're not processing them quickly enough. If we, were, if we process them, it, if we had a decent system, but we're, we're, you know, and the other, the other problem is since we left the European Union, the Dublin Agreement does not come into play. Now, under those terms, when we were in Europe, the Dublin Agreement meant that we could send back illegal migrants to the country in Europe where they first landed, or, or another European country. Now, we are not able to do that, as we're no longer in Europe. So that should have been... You know, that but we are in Europe. We are in Europe. Yes, but we are not... We are in Europe. We are not in the European, European, in the European yeah, Union. That's a very good absolutely. thing. Anne Whittacombe, Anne, Anne Whittacombe, you come in. We actually sent back under the Dublin Convention because we had, and I well know this myself, we had the devil's own job. Uh, to get the Dublin Convention to work and for countries to accept them back. So the idea that because we've left, we've suddenly given up a major facility. It was a facility that never worked, Nina. Now, you but give me the statistics, and you're so if fond it, of statistics. How many people did we send back under the Dublin Convention? I have, I have no idea, but the facility is there, oh, yeah. and if we can make it work, it was there, but we no longer have that facility. But the, but the problem is, you have, to, you have to treat this, you have to treat this efficiently, professionally, and also with humanity. And I think the, tr the trouble is, we have got a government that is, well, it's a caretaker government, it's not taking care of anybody at the moment. So they, they know the weather is good. They know we don't have a government that, that's in place. I mean, a year ago, you know, we, we had the whole Afghanistan thing. We had Dominic Raab on a beach not doing his job and, and, and his civil servant, his top civil servant, who should have been carrying the can and doing the job and facilitating all of that, also refused to come back from holiday. So they, they know that at, at this time of year, there's nobody minding the gate. So you can see it, apart from the good weather, that's why they come. We don't have a government that's functioning. And, and God help us when Liz Truss gets in because she'll get in. I mean, I cannot imagine how, how, how she's going to deal with this. this, this is, there's absolutely no way. She reminds me of one of those shop floor dummies in a, de, in a defunct 50s department store in the window, left in the window, and you look at it and you think, my God, I can see why they went broke. Well, I think that's, I think that's very unkind, very well, unkind. I'm sorry, it just, it just And very me, demeaning of a woman who has been an accomplished cabinet minister uh, for the past Come 10 years cabinet. and who did an incredible job as the international she, trade secretary of this country. Of and Anne Whittacombe, you, can't, do you want to respond? Of, she can't tell the difference Nina the just said Anne Whittacombe respond. Sea. Not the Baltic. Yeah. You know where the, you know, the Baltic oh, and the Black Nina, Sea is, and she doesn't. Nina, Nina just let Anne come in. Just be fair and make it a two-way conversation. Uh, first of all, Nina and I are actually at one over Afghanistan. It was handled hugely badly, and not just at the time, not just at the time with people on beaches, mm -hmm. but for years beforehand, we knew exactly who the Afghan interpreters were. They were identifiable yeah. by their commanding officers, and we did dash all about it. And I have Agreed. been yelling that from the rooftops and in my express column for a very, very long time. But on the general issue of migrants coming here, the facts are we are too attractive because of the system, 
We don't practice routine detention. We don't have, as I say, national identity cards or any means of tracing people who just don't go where they're supposed to go. Uh, and there is a way through this um, which would actually combine what Nina wants, which is fast processing, which I'm in agreement with, and what I want, which is to know where they are. Uh, and that is, as I say, if you detained routinely every new asylum seeker, you can't do it with those that are already here, the, every new asylum seeker, if you detain them routinely, you'd know where they are. And if you say no, then you can send them back. But if you're going to say yes, you can do it that much more quickly because you've got them on the spot. You don't have to rely on the post and finding out where they are. You can pursue their nationality and all the rest of it, because half of them lie about that. Uh, you can do all of that. And I'm afraid, Nina, I think you're just, I, I mean, you're humane, and that's great, but I think you're also rather starry-eyed. I'm not at all starry-eyed. I'm very pragmatic and practical. And it is not practical nor humane to detain every single person that comes onto our shores. It is absolutely not right. No well, other country in the world does all right. that. Well, look, spirited debate. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you so much to the former Tory minister, Anne Whittacombe, and the broadcaster and writer, Nina Mishkoff. But who do you agree with? After small boat arrivals hit record levels this week, is the UK too welcoming of illegal migrants? From Jack on Twitter, it's high time that we send people back to France, a perfectly safe country, instead of allowing a huge number to come here whilst making us pay for it. From Trev, I don't think we are welcoming. We are just incapable of securing our borders. It's a travesty. Successive governments started by Labour chose not to bother police in our borders over 20 years ago, and now they've forgotten how to do it. And from Richard via the email, regardless of any opinions on illegal migration, one thing is for sure, it cannot continue as it is. So someone is going to have to come up with a solution. And in terms of the results, 93% of you agree that the UK is too welcoming of illegal migrants, just 7% of you say we're not.